Hi friends, welcome to Biology Tutor. If you like this channel, please share and subscribe. Don't forget to click the bell button for notifications. Today, we are going to discuss about Microscopy Part 2 of Microbiological, Biotechnological and Medical Aspects Day 3 of Food Safety Officer Day 66. Yesterday, we have discussed about some of the microscopes Today we are continuing the session. What is confocal microscopy? Confocal microscopy is also known as confocal scanning laser microscopy. Theodor Maiman discovered laser. What is the full form of laser? Light amplification by the stimulated emission of radiation. That is the full form of laser. Light amplification by the stimulated emission of radiation. Traditional light microscopes gives us murky and fuzzy images, but CSLM or confocal scanning laser microscope gives us a good and clear image. Here an aperture placed on the above of objective lenses. It is known as spatial pinhole. You should remember that particular point. Spatial pinhole to block out of focused light. What is the purpose of spatial pinhole? To block out of focus light in image and eliminates other stray lights from parts of the specimen that lie above and below the plane of focus. Spatial pinholes are present in confocal microscopy, capturing multiple two dimensional images at different depths in a sample enables the reconstruction of three-dimensional structures within an object. This process is known as optical sectioning. What is optical sectioning? Capturing multiple two-dimensional images at different depths in a sample enables the reconstruction of three-dimensional structures within an object. That is known as, that process is known as optical sectioning in confocal microscopy or in confocal scanning laser microscope. Thus the only light used to form an image from the plane of focus and much sharper image is formed here much sharper and good image is performed when compared with normal uh, microscopes. Inventor of confocal microscopy who has invented confocal microscopy Merwin Minsky do not forget this name Merwin Minsky is the inventor of confocal microscopy this is a structure of confocal microscopy laser confocal microscopic image of dendritic cells electron microscopes what are electron microscopes how many of them are there the first one is known as transmission electron microscope and the second one is known as scanning electron microscope. In electron microscope, electron replace light as the illuminating beam. In normal microscopes, we use light source but here the things are entirely different and electrons are used instead of light over here. Transmission electron microscope. A heated tungsten in the electron gun generates a beam of electrons. A beam of electrons is generated by tungsten gun that is focused on the specimen by the condenser. Then magnetic lenses are used to focus the electron beam over here. Magnetic lenses are used to focus the electron beam. Column containing lenses and specimens should be in vacuum. For what purpose? Electrons are deflected in the presence of air. So we have to keep vacuum over here. Specimen scatters some electrons. But those electrons pass through the specimens forms a clear image on a fluorescent screen. Only extremely thin slice 20 to 100 mm of specimens can be viewed using transmission electron microscope. Specimen preparation of transmission electron microscope. 
How to prepare specimens? Specimens must be embedded in plastics for easy slicing. There is a fixation process using glutaraldehyde and osmium tetroxide. These are used to stabilize the cell structures. After dehydration of the specimen, it is to be soaked in unpolymerized liquid epoxy plastics. Then this plastic hardened to form a solid block. Then we have to cut the slices. How to cut the slices over here? Then cut the section from the block with a diamond knife or glass using a device called ultra microtome. You should remember this point ultra microtome. Then fixatives used to glutaraldehyde and osmium tetroxide. These three you should remember from this slide. Specimens must be soaked into solutions of heavy metal salts such as lead citrate that also you should remember uranyl acetate uranyl acetate and lead citrate used to soak these specimens the lead and uranium ions for what purpose the lead and uranium ions bind to the structures of the specimen and make them more electron opaque osmium tetroxide fixate fixative also stains specimens then it mounted on a tiny copper grid and can be viewed. Negative staining method of specimen preparation. Specimen is prepared out in a thin film using phosphotungstic acid or with uranyl acetate. In this method means negative staining method of specimen preparation. In this method heavy metals will not penetrate the specimen but render the background dark and the specimen appears bright in color. What types of samples can be viewed using negative staining method of specimen preparation? Structure of virus particles, bacterial gas vacuoles and other similar kinds of specimens can be viewed in this method. Shadowing method of specimen preparation what is shadowing method? Here a specimen is coated with thin film of platinum or other heavy metal by evaporation at an angle of 45 degree from horizontal. Then metal hit the microorganism only on one side. Metal coated area appears as dark over here. Then the other side appears as light. So we can easily observe the light area. The other side will be dark. It helps to study virus particle morphology, DNA and other bacteria and archaeal flagella etc. That is a shadowing method of specimen preparation of term. This is the transmission electron microscope. You can see electron source, electromagnetic lens system, sample holder and imaging system that are incorporated in this diagram. Next the scanning electron microscope. What is scanning electron microscope? What is the function of that? Sum produces an image from electrons released from atoms on an object surface. Here secondary, secondary electrons are used. Sum has been widely used to examine the surfaces of microorganisms in great detail. Most of the SEMs have a resolution of 7 nanometer or less. When electrons heat on specimens, secondary electrons are emitted from that particular area. First we have an electron source. That electron source will produce some of the electrons and it will go and heat on the specimens and secondary electrons are emitted from that particular area of the specimens. Sec secondary electrons hits on scintillator and form flashes of light. This signals, this light signals convert to form electrical current and amplified by a photomultiplier. That is the principle of scanning electron microscope. This is the diagram of scanning electron microscope. 
थैंक यू इफ यू लाइक दिस चैनल प्लीज शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब डोंट फॉर गेट यू क्लिक द बेल बटन फॉर नोटिफिकेशन ऑल द बेस्ट फॉर यूर एग्जाम